and it's again quick art talk time welcome everyone i hope that everyone is doing well despite of course still we live in a situation where everything is closed we are being restricted other than that i hope that this whole world situation didn't impact your health that is the most important all right that out of the way let's uh, move on here we are going to have a next episode um in regards to featuring students uh, work and reviewing the homework on top of that so we got uh, good reactions from the last episodes a lot of people were interested in, in seeing how we talk in class how we review the homework and again it's nothing compared to what we do actually in class physically and um, but it is still a good uh, reinterpretation and a good version of you know it's it's a good sneak peek so to speak right and students that are finished with our courses and that reach out to us they have an, a set amount of time to finish their final tasks which we then um, react to and give feedback when they are ready with with all the work that they have uh, what they have done so this is done for the advanced class the work here you see is a final presentation of a car design that we did uh, during my class for the advanced hardware design, right? Um, what what we do, what we really like to do is me and me and Derek, we work in a way that the class is synchronized with each other. So we come up at the end of the term, we come up with a certain IP. Derek's task was to make a certain cityscape because his class is all about environments, and I was to and my task was to give uh, an, an vehicle design that will fit into that universe, right? So first the students figure out the environment, they figure out the mechanics, the hardware language, its functionality, its aesthetics, etc. right? Let's, uh, let's talk here more in particular about this design over here. This has been done, I think, um, I saw the first reinterpretations of this design during week seven, eight. So week eight is already like the last week. Um, Stefan was uh, was a very hard worker. By the way, his name is Stefan Wacker. Stefan R. Wacker or Rauen Wacker, I'm not sure. On his Instagram, it's stated differently than it is in our system. Uh, he came from Germany, very hard worker, young, tough guy, very open to criticism, and he improved. Holy shit. Let's give you guys first an example before I start. So you see here this beautiful interior, so I will cover that as well. You see here this beautiful final render. You see here the beautiful other version. Here you see the explorations, which phew, I remember phew, hours upon hours of explanation and feedbacking about design philosophy, the flow and aesthetics. So yeah, he, I guess when he sees that, he still remembers the, the pain and, and my nagging. Uh, but that was in a good way. I mean, I don't nag in a whiny way, I think. I do it out of care. Right, um, hold on, where was his shittier work? Did I even open that or was I afraid that my computer would break down? Oh, there you go. So, and I'm, I'm just kidding, of course, I don't want to. Uh, okay, so here you see this was so during week six, you know, there you go. Proper file naming, I like that. And during week six, you can see that the shapes here are all over the place, right? And what do I mean by that, right? Because this is a reoccurring problem with everyone, right? Um, of course, we talked about upon hours and hours how to fight this. Let's give a shortened version here so people know what, like if you're interested in focal point and you're hesitating to sign up or not, then this is what awaits you, right? Yes, we use trendy tools. Yes, we use uh, 3D in advanced classes to make more accurate work. But what is the most important thing? Having your fundamentals engraved like into stone. It needs to be like as easy as walking for you. Like that design philosophy uh, needs to be really, really embedded in your system. And that is what, what we are doing. And here you can see that, well, the design philosophy is, well, let's be honest, not existent, right? We see here, for example, that you know we have random lines. And what is design? Design, when we're talking especially about cars, cars have been around for more than 100 years, 120 years, more than 120 years right now, right? Am I right? Something like that. And once a function 
over time, uh, let me take my notes here, once a function over time becomes kind of mastered, right? Let's say 1920. So let's say that these were like the first generation of cars. Now we have 2021, right? So when something gets invented, right? Like a car, uh, self-driving basically, well, a, a vehicle that had its own engine, you didn't need a horse, right? But what is then aesthetically the first thing that they had uh, visual reference from to make these vehicles look like, right? Well, they look kind of like um, like carriages from a horse, right? That is the, because we only had then the only visual reference during that time was the aesthetic and the aesthetical culture from what carriages used to look like, right? And you had some like weird things here in the front because there was like a suspension system and everything, right? Here you had the windows just like in a carriage and there are like lamps, like sometimes here maybe even, sometimes here there was like sticking out of the rest of the design because they just, just need the lantern on top of it to see the road, right? Like pure function, pure function. There were still some aesthetics involved, of course, However, there was no, everything was really functional. All the mechanics were really exposed. Now you move on, fast forward to 2020, right? You had, of course, you know, cars developed into different cultures as well. You know, in the USA, you had, uh, you know, the beefy Mustangs, muscle cars. In Europe, it was, uh, you know, the, the German car brands that were dominating the field, right? Like uh, Mercedes, BMW which were uh, opposed to muscle cars, they were smaller. However, their design language was like more square, you know, because their background was more militaristic, uh, to be true, right? Then of course, uh, who am I missing? Well, the, the Soviet Union had a huge impact on the world as well. They made shitty cars, of course, because of communism, right? Lack of competition creates that. Everything gets uh, uh, government controlled, competition goes down, and thus you you have just cars that really solely base, you know, as long as they drive, function, I swear to God. Because in Poland, for example, we were also occupied by the Soviets in Poland, a car production run the would run sometimes for even 30, 40 years, right? So you would have, uh, have a design from the 1950s and they, I swear, no kidding, they used to make these cars to like 1990, you know, like until the, until the Soviet Union failed entirely, right? Um, Europe was all about, well, definitely function, but, um, well, all function. They, like, they were guided not only by function, but I guess you can say real, real uh, the aesthetical, they had a very hard aesthetical impact, right? So they were mixing these two in a very nice way, right? The design, was following the function in a very aesthetical, pleasing way, right? You even look at the Mercedes um, from, well, it doesn't matter, 1940s, 1950s, 60s, they had always a balanced design. It was balanced. You would say, well, you remember these like rocket kind of cars, they had like the, the, the rear like this, right? So it was, um, so here's function aesthetics. Uh, as and I guess USA will be more guided by more like aesthetics, right? They didn't care much about, uh, well, they cared about a function, but for example, fuel economy, they didn't care, you know, just make them wide, make them cool, make them heavy, you know, make them muscly, right? And um, th these, uh, and that is how the car developed into different design language, but also the through time the car developed right and i'm not going to talk into much detail about it because we just don't have the time and you know i keep these things really for the physical classes and for the whole terms but in 2020 we arrived where you know a car right now looks something like this right it's it's just a it became a sleek beast right it's uh Right, and uh, what, what, when you see, okay, it's, I mean, it's of course it's shitty, you know, I just don't want to, let's make a quick headlight here, just to show you an example of how function developed. 
and how design not only follows function but also follows aesthetics right so through a hundred years the function didn't change right which is taking you from point a to b now aesthetic wise a lot has changed right for example with the headlight is just stuck on top of the body of the car it pops out in its silhouette whereas over time you see that the headlight not only is inside of the body but the shapes of the headlight itself are following the other shapes right the wheels for example of a car are forming a negative space in the body so what do you do well you you really have to kind of align the panels so that they every shape starts to listen to one another right headlight as well right the distance between the panel cuts needs also to stay very consistent as well right because if you start having different distances here and here then your design will lose its design flow and quite frankly um, it also loses its efficiency of being mass produced right and this brings me to his first sketches here you see that you know there is there is no uniform flow there is a negative space here for no reason the doors are way too small we have here weird shapes that actually you know if you would manufacture that um, you know like the weight distribution alone it will probably just fall apart after a while other sketches look slightly better but for example this is a monstrosity right look at the look at the headlights alone they are, they every shape almost has its own world every shape is disconnected they're not listening to another and again what do i mean by that well let's uh let's open up some reference hold on i actually have it open because i did a study of an audi and it is not maybe the front but it is the rear and the same design philosophy applies on the front and as on the rear of the car so you can see here the headlights right and then the rest of the body now how are the headlights nicely integrated with, with one another right like why is it for example like arrogantly speaking because i'm talking now about my own work and then i'm talking about here student work but the good thing is he improved so much right so again why is this not working right and why is this working for example so let me explain in a quick and efficient way hopefully for you here we have a headlight and we have lines following it into it so he tries to bind them with some consistency right he tries to relate the shapes to one another but then i find a problem here um, look at that these lines are these lines are straight these lines uh, are start starting to bend the headlight alone is a, is kind of a focal area right it is it has a very bended design language and i'm not seeing it back in the rest of the silhouette the rest of the silhouette has a, and the pan, the silhouette and the panels together are having very squarey lines sometimes i see a reoccurrence of some bubbly shapes here but you know it's not serving any consistency here then we have the grill which is looks shy compared to the size of the headlight right um, and the grill is again not listening to what's happening over here if you look at for example this is definitely um, re reminding me of the, of the audi of course which which i said that they should also study because to my to my in my opinion uh, the, the audi the the a5 series uh, like this one here um, that has, has been designed by um, Martin De Silva. I know his last name for sure. De Silva. Look him up. Uh, I think his name was Martin De Silva. To me, it is the most well-balanced design up to date. And quite frankly, it is the trendsetter for all modern vehicles. The car has been designed in around 2007, I believe. Or in 2007, the first A5 came onto market. And everyone started to do these open grill designs, right? So let's repeat the open grill design here a little bit. And... Uh, well, first of all, I'm making it here a little bit brutal and let's see what we can do with the headlights so it fuses nicely together with the with the design, right? 
with the rest of the design. So I'm making it here. I'm making, I'm connecting these lines here already, right? Um, well, I'm keeping the, I'm keeping the, I'm keeping the headlines very big here as well. And this is already much better. It's, it's a small difference, but what happens here? What exactly happened here? Here I'm keeping the corners tight, just like I'm keeping the corners here tight. Then this line over here is listening to this line, right? And there is a nice distance. We have a nice space, like a nice space gets created. Remember that every time you make a detail, it impacts the rest, right? You make a detail here, for example, a side air intake. Well, now you have this shape over here. Does it feel balanced? Well, not quite, right? Maybe again, we'll have to make this headlight over here smaller to compensate for that, right? To make again, this bumper area here feel more brutal, right? It's all about maintaining the balance. Here, completely lacking. Here we have a weird space now here, see? By doing this shape, he creates a shape that is just not economical. It doesn't listen to anything. It is not listening to the rest of the design. And quite frankly, if I'm, if I'm imagining also as a manufacturer, if you have to think as a manufacturer, then you can see that it means that a shape like this would have to be manufactured, right? Because he's separating it with panels. Does this look like a balanced shape to manufacture? Not to me, right? Here we have, you know, something that will just yeah break down like it looks very fragile and here we have this <laughs> massive clunk of 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 metal going right and then we have here kind of a triangle that is again like two completely different parts right but now let's talk about the evolution of what he learned over the weeks um, maybe it is smart to not show the final at once but the more the 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 more refined explorations you can see that here already his sketches start to be well on a level that you start to think like hey i might hire this guy if i mean if i was a studio you know if if i was in a position to hire a concept artist right i mean sometimes i am rarely when i need help that's a different topic anyway here we see you know um very good shapes. They start to listening to one another. Good consistency, right? Just what we talked about in a brief way uh, minutes ago. He starts to really understand design flow, right? And I like how we also involve some shapes that are more um, that are that are more edgy, more cornery. That shows more corner, and that is because I gave um, and that is because the the challenge was to mix modern shapes with a tint of going back into the aesthetics of the 80s, right? If you look at, for example, the Ferrari Testarossa, which again was, uh, which again was a main reference of this assignment, it is still a very sleeky looking car, regardless of the amount of square shapes it has, right? So I should, uh, I should probably really back this up with an image so you guys know what I'm talking about. So let's, um, Maybe let's just uh, Google it quickly, Ferrari Testarossa. Uh, I grew up with this uh, car kind of, so the younger people might not notice. So here is a piece of enlightenment for you. This is one of the most iconic car of the 80s, right? This is the definition of, ah, this is the definition of what a sports car looked like for, yeah, for 10 years, uh, like that whole 80s area, uh, era. And I think the Testarossa was, produced into the early 90s here we see a modernized version of it but you can see that the original here has still you know is and stefan is really good at capturing these forms and reiterating them in his uh, in his own way that's all what cre creativity is in the end right you take you absorb the world and you dissect it into the smallest pieces rearrange it in such a way that it starts to feel so unique. No one will have a clue uh, where you got these original ideas from, right? If you if you dive dive deep enough, 
the rear of the Ferrari is man so iconic look at that look at how beefy and nice it looks like here right and here these lights are being kind of like dimmed by this rib black rib design of course the iconic horse in the middle which uh, which is the iconic Ferrari logo one mirror you know because fuck it like oh, I just need to only see my rear from one side aerodynamics I guess uh, it saves weight as well you know it's like that 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 identity of the sports car is so nicely done and then here what we talked about about paneling right every panel even if you study the paneling of this vehicle and you take it as a chunk it still makes sense everything is balanced yes it becomes here more fragile but then the balance on the other side is also that here it becomes more fragile because of the ribs and then again you have this nice curve around the negative space which needs to be there because of the wheel right so that is uh that has that has been i guess some nice uh dissection very fast but effective i hope and here you see a further development i have of course uh, my big critique for next time if stefan is going to explore it in a way uh, make more side sketches right he started to do it here as well but again these side sketches do still lack the proportions of a car right he still gives me weird sized doors here it gets better but again you want to keep up the consistency of the quality and i had the same problem when i was starting out right it was sometimes very hard to keep up the consistency the more you sketch the more flawless you get the more knowledge you gain throughout effective studying effective knowledge absorption and it's uh, well muscle memory is also part of that and you will see that this proportion will be second to none there are some problems here as well with uh, with the shapes right i told him i think i critiqued him about this already this shapes this shape over here in particular feels like more from an older vehicle right that means that the front here is bulky um, modern vehicles tend to have the opposite right when they where their front is something like this right and then the lights are something like this when you move this too much up then you get the design language from the older cars right uh, you kind of want to avoid that the second problem with that is that the when you deciding to make a bulky part here then you're leaving the sides exposed in a very weird way and then the windshield alone beca becomes this very weird shape that you don't that, that just doesn't refer to modern cars right so uh, i'm happy that in the end he ditched it because uh, he ditched it right let's see <laughs> yes see it's a nice straight line right now so yeah um other than that for example what i what i really like what he did is with uh with here with the air intakes right they feel complex well they feel sketchy not defined but what i like let's change the color here maybe to something more yeah something more visible um here we have for example a nice detail and then here the rest of the air intake is starting to listen to to this uh, piece that he came up with right and then of course it creates a new shape and in my opinion that shape could be thicker here right to maintain the consistency it's a small thing but you will notice that and maybe even you can cut it off here see because that creates it creates some beefness on the on the front area and that beefness maybe maybe that beefy part here should be reinforced without uh, well, uh, by taking the extension of the air intake away because here we have a beefy part as well right it's where the wheel used to be it's a flying car by the way shit sorry i thought i really forgot to say that i got a little bit ahead of myself it's a flying car and the challenge was of course what will you do with the design language of the car right more and more now that electric cars are starting to be a thing you start to see that things that used to have a function are you know being replaced by more aesthetical things what do i mean by that even if you now look at for example the new audi e-tron or even the tesla right like where it used to have its grill it has like a suggestion where that there was a grill right and then you have here like the uh, the headlights 
<clears throat> as a suggestion even when with the audi e-tron for example it still has the grill but it has been uh, replaced with some sensors you know but the the idea the aesthetic impact of the of the grill is still there you know and that's very interesting to see so what would car manufacturers and designers do when we know not when we won't need wheels anymore will we replace it by some bulkiness or will we place some anti-gravity uh, equipment here that will still have a purpose to make this um, well bevel out a little bit or will or will it be totally replaced and totally be forgotten i don't think it will be forgotten and the reason why is if you even look at um, uh, the, the rear of the car nowadays you see the shapes on the on the bottom let's be more clear about that um, right you have here these the the diffuser here right let's pick a better color if they hear the diffuser and then here if you uh, you have here you have the exhaust the exhaust of course serve a purpose right because well all the all the waste from the from the engine you know let's leave it nice in the back don't clog the vision of anyone just put it in the back but over the years sports cars in particular the uh, the exhaust the exhaust became an aesthetical feature as well and now you see what you know what cars are doing is even if there is no need for an exhaust they are putting in like nice fake vents over here you know with in a in a shape for example like this that listens to the rest of the design language of the diffuser right that's what they're doing swear to god look up go on the street check out the newest mercedes i mean they're, they're not even evs right they they still have the combustion engine but because of regulations i mean it, it is definitely the case if you live in europe because of regulations uh and to minimize the emissions uh, the exhaust is somewhere here not visible and then they have this only this like diffuser plastic thing you know and that is a sign that the aesthetics are taking over um, and where even when it's not necessary to have the function there to have a functioning exhaust there they still continue to do it because we as a society as a civilization got used to it of of how a sports vehicle should look like and that brings me of course back to what happened when the car was designed um, when the first generation of cars were designed right what were they doing they were aesthetically basically reinterpreting the carriage because that was culturally accepted as the main form of transportation right and um, yeah that is again a very very uh, i guess a basic thing to remember when you're going to design anything right of course we go much deeper in class but i, I guess this is this is uh, this is this gives you a good glimpse right how to absorb design philosophy all right and now let's go finally to the final the file i don't know which one is the final i think that these two are just in two different colors and to be honest i like the yellow one but i like the rendering on this one more because it feels more metallic here we see that you know that there is some cheap render effects on the glass but i i would definitely change that yes yeah, stefan i know that you can do you can do better other than that i i do love this piece really i like the presentation i like the reflection i like how you know it is like kind of in this Sid Meadish environment and people are just looking you know it's like maybe some gallery of you know the reveal of a new model and you know this kind of like the after party people are talking this guy is like interested in it more than the others because the others are like they're like flirting with each other maybe I don't know but this guy is like a complete car nerd and he's like oh yes this is my goal now you know and so it's a story and that's nice it's always nice to put your vehicle in a story environment so something that I don't do because I'm just like try to pump vehicles one out of the other but something that I should change maybe you know put my vehicles also in a storytelling and uh, that is also something that we we talk about with uh, with, with Darek we always help each other uh, he has the environment class of course and environments are more story driven of course so he he also tells me to 
kind of incorporate that aspect into my vehicle designs as well anyway what could be done better first of all what is good about this design is that it's simple I, I just like that in the end he just went for the simple shape boom a very sleek nice cut lines I like what's happening in the front I like the headlights the headlights maybe could have a more consistent design language which um, I will just make it uh, slightly longer why would I make the headlights longer than you might ask well because the headlights need to kind of listen of the rest of the silhouette of the vehicle the feature of this vehicle is its long ass front right so all the other aspects and detail within it could also benefit of that elongated like design so to speak and um, what could be cool is to even you know to kind of give it a slight little retro feeling is to put uh, you know maybe some indicator very subtle of course with the proper light effects you know maybe a cheap color dodge will do right so there you go and of course um what else what i wanted to, where to start because there are things that i want to talk about so okay what definitely could be done better is again the detailed distribution right um when you played for example the latest game one of the latest games that came out cyberpunk um i'm only going to talk about the art and not about the gameplay okay guys art wise it is beautifully done okay it's definitely a lot of time has been spent on the designs and everything uh, and let's talk about that right because what can we tell about you know a cyberpunkish theme that this vehicle is taking place in right we came up with this with this kind of world where it is well it is not cyberpunk cyberpunk but it is kind of a mixture of blade runner and it still has these aesthetics of Romanescence and Gothic architecture. And I, I hope that uh, uh, Derek will definitely have time to go over that as well and go over the homework so you can guys see more work from the students. And the car needed to fit in that environment in an aesthetical way, right? That's why I wanted to mix those 80s feelings and these hard edges, which I think Stefan really nicely um, adapted to. But let's talk about, you know, a different uh, aspect about how designs are tackled overall, right? We have here the triangle of uh, creation, let's say. And I, I we do always uh, at school, we always find new ways to explain things, you know, so let's try a new one. Um, we are now here being guided by, designs are being guided by what? Well, function, we talked about it. Um, uh, uh, ticks and technical level slash timeline maybe let's say tech level because tech the technical level improves with um, the technical level improves with uh, with time right so when you're talking about a car that is uh, from the 1920 then I guess we'll be somewhere here right 1920 right it is all about function mm, not so much aesthetically pleasing yet right uh, currently like for our culture of course right it has the design flow is you know very messy tech level is low right um, when we're talking for example about um, you know a modern car right now like uh, like uh, the new w m series then it's function well, of course it's you know, how much is it driven by function well we figured out the function so the function is not that visible it is not so super in your face you know the headlights are all you know adjusted to the rest of the design so i would say you know it is somewhere here right it is the the, the aesthetics are it is definitely driven more by aesthetics right like especially when you're talking about the grill of the bmw the iconic kidney grill it of course the function the function is to intake air but the aesthetics took over as this iconic shape the tech level is let's say somewhere in the middle compared to you know a cyberpunk car right and now we're going to a cyberpunk kind of car right so from the universe that we were creating here so i would say what happened is that it definitely goes up in technical level but somehow it doesn't stay high in aesthetics because 
what is nice about the cyberpunkish design is that the function starts to show more right like for example here there is some kind of new kind of engine booster maybe that starts to peek through the main silhouette right cars right now have this you know modern cars if you know very closed in design where you know the like really the the doors the panel lines everything is like nicely coherent everything is like a flow like a fish basically right i'm just like thinking and doodling here right and the fish is not it's not a messy design right even the gills are like you know nicely organically they are not they are they are taking their own path but they are still adapting themselves to the rest of the design and the fins on top of it also you know they have the sleek design and even though the fins on different places have different shapes they have the same design identity and that is something that we also need with cars right and here we see the function aspect kind of popping through right because maybe this has some special function as well maybe there's some kind of cooling device for the engine and that's why we have this harsh panel separation here right maybe this is some kind of side wing that needs to pop out a little bit from the main silhouette and that's why it's sticking out because again the function starts to show more and why is it that uh, in a cyberpunk world whereas you know we have a higher tech level that we start to see the function more well new technologies gets introduced and so designers didn't find a way yet to integrate it nicely right so that is a good explanation and that is definitely visible with designs of nowadays right we figured out how to integrate the headlights to the rest of the, of the design. We figured out how to integrate a nice looking grill so it, so it actually becomes later on even an iconic trademark of some brands, right? Like the BMW. And so this is something that uh, I really like about this one. What could have been done better is again, uh, let's, maybe, let's maybe continue what could be done better. Let's lighten this design up a little bit. There you go. Not saying that the contrast was bad, but now you can see more of the details. And I would definitely, uh, what I have here, this negative space, I would definitely try to somehow copy that into the rear, even though the rear is longer. I would still somehow try to reintegrate that, right? The reason for that is, you know, um, I'm reinforcing that aspect of uh, of that, you know, it is becomes function driven, but at the same time, uh, I'm creating a nice consistency, right? And it, it starts to look already more consistent, more consistent. Now, I think this is an indicator of a headlight, but I'm not sure. What I would like to see is more coherency with the main body. Um, so let's put it here. This shape bothers me. It just is too, I don't know, too eye catchy. And it's in a weird place, right? If, I know it's some kind of fuel port, but maybe just do it at this place, right? Closer to the door so you give here a nice breathing space, right? So here is your focus of, of shapes that, you know, come together. Door handle, door handle could be also like, uh, moved a little bit to uh, to this uh, area here like like so and then this can be nicely removed now what i don't like is this fragile looking panel that sticks out here right it looks like paper kind of and that's why i would just uh, really fuse this together make it slightly even longer and make this make this here perhaps even flatter hold on i need to i need to be under let's just paint on one layer here make the roof line maybe a little bit lower as well Maybe what this car could use is now that, see now it's sloping here too much, all right? And I don't want to impact the design too much. So what we can compensate is maybe add a, mm, kind of maybe a spoiler. Maybe that spoiler is uh, foldable. A spoiler would make sense for uh, for a vehicle like that, you know, for 
well, as a flying car, so it even could be like as a, could even maybe serve as a as some kind of wing, you know. Maybe somewhere on the other side you will see it, but the roof will kind of cover it more. Uh, yeah, just that window line, make it a little bit cut it, cut more lines where necessary, like like cut it, adjust the shape, you know. Just you will find out that with the little, with the with the minimalistic um, form uh, modification, it can impact the whole design. Let's uh, delete my doodle thinking here. So it doesn't obstruct the whole design. I like this. I, I see it as a wing, and I would definitely make this uh, larger. This is a nice way to give it a replacer of where, where the you where the wheels used to be. So we can just maybe make this slightly bigger. And uh, speaking about it, I would actually what I what I think would also be good is if we. Uh, again, repeated it on the front. Not uh, copy paste. Well, first we'll copy paste, but then you adjust the the form so that it listens to you know the design language on the front, right? So we make this longer again and create something like this. Now, of course, I see again a new problem to solve, which is boom. This is, this gets too pointy. Feels too cheap, right? So you maybe start. Uh, Cutting it into a nice, into a nicer shape, right? And maybe his wings can fold in a little bit closer into the body, right? So that's why how the mechanics get exposed and stuff, right? So you can maybe, and then you then it thickens the closer it gets to the car. And of course, you know you need to the proper proper shade for it and everything to render it out but we're not gonna do that of course now damn starts to okay well, well how are we on the time uh, okay see that's what I mean 42 minutes and I always promise myself to keep them short um, anyway I think that I think that that is already much better this is nice um, but I'm, I don't know it's it's nice but I would if I have something like this that yeah maybe the spoiler should be um, should resemble some of that design feature, uh, right? Because this is kind of nice, it continues here, and then maybe that should, yeah, maybe that should re pop in the back somehow. Yeah, I have an idea, I would do it something like this, right? I don't know if you guys know what I mean here, but. Basically, if you have the car here, here is its roof. All right, and there is this, there is this here, this feature of that air intake, I suppose, and there is this aesthetical line that follows through the side line, and then this line would go in the back and create um, an outline of a spoiler, right? And then the spoiler will, you know, with a different material, the spoiler will just continue here to the back. It's an idea, right? Just to keep that consistency going, all right? Um, other than that, we can maybe make this. Uh, this has some weird, funky shapes. Maybe we can cut it a little bit here, right? To have. Uh, to make it well maybe not smaller because it, yeah, it seems to me it's a dominating feature I kind of like it but I would definitely make it a little bit uh, smaller then there is this nice line here and it gets thicker here at the door and then it ends here in a very weird pointy way um, I will just continue that line that golden bronze thing I should use a thinner. Um, wall, wall, can I decide when I restart this device? Okay, fuck that. 
outside of active hours it says okay i got a nervous a little bit there um yeah so what can i do without impacting the design more this is kind of cool but maybe the front like i imagine that you know when a car is flying a lot of debris a lot of debris will be hit right so i imagine that it will be cool to have like kind of a you know a, a, a kind of a bumper you know that is very sleek and i would then use the same kind of design language of the side wing and then it gets kind of something that's something similar we saw with the ferrari right and it gets like this nice openness this negative space gets reinforced in that manner i can make it a little bit darker right uh, and then i'm not sure about this red line because it's just here in the middle so either continue it or you know uh, remove it maybe we, maybe you can add that red line somewhere somewhere else but i don't know seems to me that it's not necessary the red line it feels too sporty and the rest of the coloristics of the car they feel too aesthetic like you know they're too like like they're fancy uh, so yeah i like here kind of the side wings uh, but maybe again adjust their shapes uh, this needs to be more coherent with one another i think as well Yeah, I would like really st still study the, still explore maybe the, the rear of this car, right? Or take a lesson from it when you're going to design your next car. Uh, proportion wise, front is very huge, but you know, maybe that was your goal. The, let's flip it maybe. The, the rear could definitely use some more, uh, some more love. And uh, just to give maybe a final touch more love as in basically make the rear slightly uh, slightly longer you know and then you will definitely have this sports limousine effect just by making that little change here you know uh, ignore the guy because i totally messed him up now right so yeah what can we learn from this in a brief way guide yourself with consistency sometimes simple is more as you notice right we here we have a weird shape but that's because this goes into the side right if this this flows this is this is part of the flow this shape here it goes around the design and then this starts to to pop out so you can actually repeat that over here as well and guide yourself with consistency simple is sometimes more of course it's easier said than done and i hope that you know in the end we uh, we showed you at least a little bit how to approach uh, design right shapes need to listen to one another we solved some of the problems here i hope and i hope that it also in the end will be the most beneficial for stefan and all the other students that did the final task of this one and of course um, helpful for our viewers um that are that you know want to have uh, that that are struggling maybe with uh, with their own design right you will notice that that it is more harder than you than you think uh, and of course for the upcoming students right that you know are are interested in a course with us you can that way you can have a sneak peek of how we of how we do it um other than that um i yeah keep on keep on rocking stefan thanks for sending over this amazing work um something you know that we not talked about is the interior maybe for next time if uh, if you if you want it right you can always i mean this this is i think we will can turn it into a series where we will have multiple of these feedbacks i really like this one i think this would be my favorite uh, of all the design consistency is here much better and then it also shows my special love for line art i, I just love line art all the time uh, if it's mixed with 3D or not, I just love that punch and I can see the characteristics of a designer when they are sketching the lines. I just love that. Anyway, that said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.